Yay, Chemistry for Your Life is finally getting off the ground. Woo! To celebrate, Jam and I are doing a t-shirt giveaway. You can enter by going to Apple Podcasts or iTunes, rating and writing a short review, and we will announce the winners on August 15th. Good luck! Hey guys, I'm Melissa. I'm Jim. I'm a chemist. And I'm not. <laughs> and this is Chemistry for Your Life. A podcast helping you understand the chemistry of everyday life. Woo! How are you today, Jam? I'm pretty good. Um, it feels like like it's been a year since we recorded last, but it actually has not. It really does. So much has happened. Yeah. We got all our socials going. We got some followers. Yep. I got attacked by a bird. Which was an interesting... Multiple times. Yeah, multiple times. That's kind of the main thing I'm thinking about is like <laughs> what's happened since we last spoke, the last it, recorded or whatever. Do you think Do you think it's because of your hair looking like a bird's nest? I, honest, I mean, not that I think that your hair yeah. looks like a bird's nest, but like it's good nest material. I feel like either that, that I had comfort in that being the reason like, oh yeah, just trying to make some house for its family <laughs> or, or it's like maybe that bird just kind of attacks everybody that comes near. Mm. That's also fine. Those two mm -hmm. options are fine. It's like if it's everybody and I'm not discriminated against or if it's like my hair looks like good material for something that birds need to do, that's like a good thing for their families. But if it's some other option, like either that bird just doesn't like me or something, then I'm I, I'm not as But I feel it. like it isn't that it attacks everyone because you are with other people and it attacked you every time. That's true. <laughs> but yeah. I think it's you. I think you're the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's like there's people coming near. I got to get him. Also, that one looks like he's got some pretty good <laughs> nest building material on top of his head. Um, if you're wondering why we're saying that's because my hair is blonde and kind of fuzzy. So yeah, that's if you don't know what I look like, then that's that helps it make sense. A key, a key <laughs> point looks a little bit like maybe like some good hay or straw. Yeah. How about you? How's your week been? Uh, well, this weekend, my sister came in from out of town. She's yeah. also a scientist. Nice. She does uh, sea level rise work. She's like Whoa. a good science communicator. She's way better at science, I think, Dude, that than me. Crazy. I've heard that it's getting nuts over on the West Coast now, sea level rise wise. Uh, but, I I don't know, but we could ask her. <laughs> yeah, we should. Yeah, that's a good topic for later. Although it's not chemistry, right? She's on so. the list. I mean, we sort of talked about when she was here about what she could do on there. I think she's. I think she'd be a good guest to have. And then the reason she came in town was because it was my nephew's very first birthday. Nice. And I made him some little cakes, and then he just touched the frosting and sort of looked at his hand like, what is this? What mm -hmm. am I supposed to do with this? And so he didn't smash it at all, but it was really cute. Has he had much sugar before? Like, Yeah, he loves ice cream. Okay. And so does his dad. My brother loves ice cream. And so did our grandpa. So I think he's like in yeah. the family genes. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like when like there's kids that have their first birthday or whatever, it's almost like that's also the time they discover sugar. Yeah. It's like, whoa. I mean, like something that, that sugary. I mean, they probably had sugar, but like something that sugary. Yeah. Kind of like that scene in 2001, Space Odyssey, when the like monkey ape person discovers that you can use a bone as a weapon. There's like this discovery of like evolutionary. I've never seen that. <laughs> it's like, it's pretty incredible, but it's this scene of like evolutionary um, kind of taking the next step. It's like the first tool, basically. But like, think about all that these monkeys the life. suddenly having the ability to like use a weapon. But Yikes. in this case, it's like a child learning that sugar is a thing. And like, <laughs> oh my gosh, there's so many possibilities. This changes everything. <laughs> I'm going to be unstoppable. Uh, so that was it. That was um, my weekend. It was good. Awesome. I'm really excited to record today. What is the thing that I'm going to be trying to learn today. <laughs> okay, so you're going to learn about specific heat, which in some ways is a little bit less complicated than last week, and in some okay. ways is a little bit more complicated than last week. Okay. But we're just sort of going to brush the surface. I'm going to give you the Gen Chem level understanding okay. of it. So okay. I've, even though I've taken some chemistry courses or whatever, like I had to take at least one for in college, and I took it obviously in high school, I don't remember this phrase at all and i don't have any recollection of anything so i'm starting with what feels like a blank slate on specific perfect heat. perfect perfect okay so 
All you need to know about specific heat okay. is that it's the amount of heat mm-hmm. required to raise one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Okay. So it's different for different things? It's different for different things. Mm-hmm. And the reason why it's different for different things is a little complicated. Okay. But the big thing that we all we teach our general chemistry students is that different substances require different amounts of heat to raise the temperature by one degree. Interesting. Okay, yeah. I mean, that makes sense, but it's just not something I've ever had to really think about. Like, right. I'm not really comparing, like, you know, this thing to this thing and thinking, man, it's taking longer to heat this up. I just I haven't really thought about it. Yeah, and most people, I mean, you've experienced this. Mm-hmm. I know you've experienced this in your everyday life in a myriad of situations. Everyone has. Okay. I'm going to give you one example, but I want you to give me an example back. Okay. So one example is you're at the beach. Okay. And the sand is hot, hot, hot. Yes. And the water is not, not, not. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's because sand requires less heat to raise the temperature than water. Oh, yeah. Interesting. But they're both like in the hot sun, but... Yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. It's like a drastic difference. The- They're both taking in the same amount of heat, uh-huh. but it requires more heat to raise water by the same temperature than it does to raise sand. So you'd have to have like a super hot sun on the water and then like a the same sun on the, <laughs> the sand <laughs> to get them to be equal, which would be impossible, obviously. You'd have to have super hot sun putting lots of heat into the body of water uh-huh. and a very chill sun putting heat into the sand. Okay. Man, interesting. You don't have them in different ovens. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty weird. I think it's intuitive because you have experienced this in your everyday life. Like uh-huh. you've experienced it at the beach, whatever. But I think if I were to say heat does not equal temperature and putting the same amount of heat into something will raise two different things by a different amount of temperature Mm -hmm. that is not intuitive right so you you know and you have experience putting the same amount of heat into two different things Mm -hmm. and it changing by different amount of temperature like i gave you the sand example yeah but that's not a thing that i think most people think about in Mm -hmm. terms of heat does not equal temperature so so that's the basics of specific heat okay do you have any questions before you try to explain it back to me? Um, I don't know if I do. I think it, it you've explained it simply enough. I'm guessing there's like way deeper than <laughs> one could dive, but right now it's just like enough to, to understand. I'm, I'm going to take a crack at explaining it back to you. Okay. I yeah, think. there is, there is way deeper yeah. things. And actually I had to go on an adventure yesterday to sort of see if it was worth trying to explain to you guys. Uh-huh. <laughs> so um, me and my organic chemistry colleagues got ourselves really confused, <laughs> uh, but it was, it was a fun and good learning experience, but I don't think it's worth it to try to explain why different things have different okay. specific heats. It's, We don't teach Gen Chem students that. I think for now, it's just enough to know that different things have different specific heats. Okay. Sand and water are super different in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And even if they're in the same conditions, like same weather, Mm -hmm. same heat source on them, Mm -hmm. because they are different, even if you you take one gram of each of them, it takes different amounts of heat to raise their temperatures. Mm -hmm. Like it would take... Um, even though they're under the same conditions, because it requires different amounts of heat to raise their temperatures by significant amounts, mm-hmm. they're going to have different temperatures, even though they're in exactly the same conditions. Yes. Constantly. They're always in the, if it's cold at a beach, it's cold for both of them, but they're going to feel differently. Exactly. If it's hot at the beach, they're, they're both in the same conditions all the time if you go to the same beach or whatever, mm-hmm. but they're never... So one thing that never changes is that it requires different amounts of heat to change their temperature. Yes. So that sand and water, I want you to give me a different example. Now that you've explained it, you got it. You understand okay. specific okay. heat. I think I've got one. I'm going to keep, okay, before you give me that, I'm going to okay. keep the sand and water and give you another example of how that impacts your life. Okay. In deserts, it's very hot during the day mm-hmm. and very cold at night. 
Uh huh. And that's because deserts are mostly made up of sand. sand. Yeah. And so they have a very low specific heat. So mm -hmm. they take in a lot of heat and their temperature goes up. But as soon as the sun goes down and they're not getting heat put in, mm -hmm. they're losing heat very quickly also. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Coastal communities have a pretty constant temperature. Mm -hmm. They don't have big swings the way deserts do. Yeah. And that's because they're surrounded by mostly water. Mm -hmm. And water is taking in a lot of heat and giving off a lot of heat without its temperature changing. Got it. So specific heat impacts the way it feels at the beach. Mm -hmm. But it also impacts the, I don't know if climate or weather is the right word, mm -hmm. but the temperatures that you're experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis based on where you live. I was thinking about one that, uh, that we experience a lot, not near a beach, that like anyone at their house okay. experiences. Um, it's really similar though. It's kind of cheating because I just took your same thing and just brought it here. So when I was a kid, what we would do is we would stand on the driveway mm -hmm. barefooted and like see how long we could stand it. But then we jump into the grass and the grass and the mm. driveway are under the same conditions as well, mm -hmm. just like the beaches, but couldn't be more different. The grass yes. felt like totally normal. It didn't feel hot at all. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it just, it almost felt like it doesn't really like get affected very much, period. Like yeah. it just felt like, okay, grass is pretty much always the same temperature. I guess yeah. unless there's like snow on or something. But so we would do that to see how long we could stand it. Um, and that's one that is the same yeah. like now even where it's Dang, like. That's a great example. I hadn't even thought about that. And it's probably because plants have a high water content. Yeah. So they, their specific heat is closer to pure water than yeah. like concrete, which is sort of like sand. Yeah. Dang, and that's a good one. And it's like, it seems like it'd be the same even winter. Like the concrete would be really cold mm -hmm. and like you could jump into the grass as long as it like wasn't like mm -hmm. didn't have snow on or something like that. It would probably feel pretty normal. Yeah. Like it probably wouldn't feel very cold. That is a great example. I was thinking you would go... Because you love coffee jam. You uh -huh. love coffee so much, I like do. probably more than any single person that I know. That's uh, an honor. It's just a fact. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's an honor. But think about how quickly your metal electric teapot or whatever gets mm, hot. Yeah. But it takes longer for the water to match that same temperature. True that. Yeah, I didn't think about that. I was thinking like, like I, f I know, like I was thinking about conductivity in like mm -hmm. just metal being a piece of that and i was thinking like oh that might be like a totally different deal like it might not really apply to no it is that is that's i mean the specific heat is yeah just the measurement of how quickly yeah, so, so yeah. It, yeah even if something's like really conductive or not it's still mm -hmm. worth measuring yes got it so you've seen it when your metal pot heats up faster than the water it inside of it yeah. you're putting the same amount of heat they're experiencing the same conditions there is a level of one's directly on the burner and the other's yeah. not but and then the other thing i was thinking about because i was thinking about coffee i was like mm -hmm. what is jam gonna be able to think about in terms of specific heat and yeah. i was thinking coffee examples and you have these cool glass mugs that almost look like beakers to me as a scientist yeah, i love this and then you have ceramic mugs. Uh -huh. The glass mugs are hotter to the touch than mm -hmm. those ceramic ones. Yeah. When the same coffee is in them. That's such a good point. It also... Or the same the, temperature coffee. The glass ones, I'm not, I don't, I haven't done any like measurements at all because I don't even know how I would. I think the glass ones lose heat faster. Yeah. If you have a specific heat, it has to do with taking in and losing heat. So whenever I put coffee in a ceramic mug, I like the glass ones more. But if I'm not going to drink it very quickly, I don't use the glass ones because um, it will, to me, seem like it cools down faster. Like, yeah. Chemistry is all around you. Man, it is. You got it. You understand specific heat and you gave me examples that I didn't even think of. I nailed it. You nailed it. But I didn't do the coffee one like you thought I would. I wish I had. But I think <laughs> if anything can have a coffee example, then I will definitely understand it. So maybe it's like... And lots of people understand coffee because lots of yeah. people, I mean, lots of people don't do coffee like you do, but lots of people do coffee. Yeah. Yeah. If they know what's good for them, they do coffee. If they know what's good for them, then they should do coffee. Sweet. Um, Great. 
So that's it. That is specific heat. And now you understand specific heat and you've been able to think of examples. And hopefully you'll go around in your life and be thinking about that while you experience things that accept and release heat differently. I definitely will. Well, Jim, what was the most exciting thing that you learned Hmm. in that? Or what was most satisfying about learning about specific heat? Um, Definitely satisfying to learn how applicable it was to coffee. I think, (laughs) I think it just really got my mind going about how many things there are like that, like the grass, concrete, sand, water, um, kettle and water. I was just like, I think my mind just started going about, man, it's, it's kind of everywhere. Like everything's going to yeah. have that. Um, mm-hmm. In your body. Yep. You don't respond to big swings in temperature. Yeah. Which I'm thankful for, for sure. Yeah. It's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Chemistry, so that was satisfying. Really, chemistry really is everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's got us surrounded really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why I love it. Well, thank you guys so much for listening this week. I hope you learned a lot about specific heat too. We are totally open to suggestions for future episodes. Thanks mm-hmm. for Melissa to teach me and you guys about. So you can find us on social media. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Gmail. And it's all the same. It's chem for your life on all of those. Isn't that so exciting that we get that handle everywhere? Yeah, it's super <laughs> simple. And you can find us to subscribe on any of your favorite podcast apps. Uh, we're on Stitcher. Apple Podcasts, Spotify. And also if you rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, that really helps us to be able to share chemistry with more people. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, thanks for coming. See you next week. This episode of Chemistry for Your Life was created by Melissa Collini and Jam Robinson. Jam Robinson is our producer, and we'd like to give a special thanks to Autumn Kiwasong, who reviewed this episode. Mm-hmm.